So about a year ago, I was at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I walk in, and there's about a 30-minute wait to get my tickets. And I was like, okay, this stinks. And we had uh, about uh, two hours there. And I'm in line for about a minute, and I see another ticket booth in the corner. So I walk over and I say, um, ma'am, can I buy my tickets here? She said, go ahead. I said, well, what's the catch? I don't have to wait here, but over there I have to wait for 30 minutes. And she said, I've been working here for three years, and every day people walk in, they get in that same line, and they'll wait there for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. <laughs> and you wonder, why do people do this? Why do we get so caught up in the little details? Oh, there's a line, I'm going to go stand in it, instead of stepping back and looking at the big picture. So today I'm going to talk about the one weapon we have against the PhDs, the MDs, as college students, recent grads. So when we go and attack entrepreneurship in the hard sciences, how we can pioneer in this field. And the one thing is the fresh perspective, the new ideas we can bring to a field. In college, you're taking classes in art history, animation, computer science, and you can bring those to biology, you can bring them to engineering, and that is what it's all about. And so, for example, a PhD in, let's say, the snail circulatory system. They've been studying the snail for about 40 years. They're not going to think that this one chemical that they've been looking at could be used in cancer or could be used in diabetes. So it's really important that as young students, we do have the ability to see into different fields and how we can bring it into our own studies and our own interests, and especially our own passions. So I'd like to introduce you to Macrovax, and now this is my venture in the cancer vaccine uh, industry and space. And how it works is it's a vaccine that teaches your own immune system to kill the cancer. And that's funny because this whole time, over 40 years ago, President Nixon declared war on cancer. And still today, we use chemotherapy and radiation as the primary forms of treatment. Now, the answer's been inside of us all along, which is really interesting. So how I got into this and kind of how Macrovax works, um, what are cancer vaccines? Now, in the tumor microenvironment, in the area around the tumor, there is a biological stop sign, chemicals that suppress your immune system. Now, what the cancer vaccines can do is they can remove that barrier and allow for immune cells to infiltrate the tumor and destroy it. So that's all you're doing is you're removing that barrier to allow your body to carry out its natural processes, and it creates a happy patient. So where, wh how did I get involved and where did I come up with this idea? So as a kid, I was really interested in marine organisms. So I was watching this NOVA research special on horseshoe crabs. They're about 300 million years old, and how their immune systems work is when they become bacterially infected, their immune cells form a clot around the bacteria and they secrete this binding protein. And what this binding protein does is it signals the immune cells to destroy the bacteria. So I thought, okay, cool. How about we find a human analog load this with the patient's tumor cells, could we disguise your tumor as a bacteria? Would your body be able to treat the tumor as a bacteria, process it, and go ahead and go kill it with the T cells and uh, necessary immune cells? So here, I'll go back. Um, now, I came up with this idea, kind of just sketched it on a uh, notepad, and brought it, it was, this was when I was in high school, it was in my junior year of high school, and I brought it to the teacher and said, hey, this is my idea, I'm really excited, I'm going to use mice, I'm going to do this, I'm going to cure cancer, whatever, and they said no. They're like, you're not going to do that, you're not going to use mice, you're not going to be able to do that, and I was about this close to giving up. No one had ever told me that an idea wasn't worth pursuing or wasn't even going to become anything, and what got me going was that no one had ever told me, no, you can't do anything. And what I did was the next best, best thing. Instead of using mice, I used octopi and starfish. And all I wanted to do is show that my vaccine, that thing that I showed you, I drew it on the board uh, just for reference, um, how it signals the immune cells. All I could do is I took a human vaccine, I made it with human blood, human serum, injected it in these starfish and octopi, I could elicit an immune response. And what that looks like is all the immune cells will move to that area of injection. So I pitched this idea to biotech companies, raised a couple thousand dollars for initial uh, studies, uh, called Georgetown University, got into the research lab to do the imaging, and kind of walking in there with this big fish tank, there's octopi like spewing ink everywhere, and everyone's just kind of looking around like, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't even make sense. No one uses these anymore. We use mice, remember? And this was the first image we got. And what really blew everyone away was the fact that I took a human vaccine, injected in this thing that doesn't even have eyes or anything, and watch their immune cells all become active. And that's when all the scientists said, okay, maybe this is worth pursuing. And that's when I got my own lab space at Georgetown, raised 10000 you know, up to now $20,000 of funding to pursue this. And now we're up to the stage of Immuticon. 
And I don't want to go into all the research of proving this in mice, showing that we can elicit an anti-tumor immune response, that when I do inject the vaccine, you can watch the tumor just dissipate and shrink. What I want to tell you about is the journey and about what I'm doing right now to further pursue this and what I believe you guys can do to do exactly like this. Now, Immuticon is a biotech company. It's a licensing company where we have the patent, we have the intellectual property, and we're licensing it to biotech companies. Now, how this kind of got rolling was the former senior vice president of Pfizer, he heard about my research and he said, no, this isn't just for cancer. You can load, yes, the tumor antigens, maybe HIV antigen if we find one, or dengue fever, or if a company wants to update their patent, or if they have a vaccine that works kind of well, this will make it more effective. So he sees this as a platform and a licensing model, and that's how Immuticon got started. And really, ultimately, what I've learned, I've learned two things from this whole experience. One is the complex interaction of the various institutions of our world. You see, when you filed for the patent, working with those lawyers, those things are about 200 pages, and there's every biomolecule on Earth covered in it. And if you just miss one, that lawyer will catch it and tell you that you missed it. And that could cost you your whole patent because another company could say, oh, well, they didn't include that. We can add that and have a totally new patent and pursue it, and then you lose because you don't have any money. And not, no, not many people are standing behind you uh, with respect to Pfizer and some of these other bigger companies. And also you have you know, the FDA looking at clinical trials, uh, also preclinical trials in mice, make sure abiding by all these uh, various rules. And that's why I feel entrepreneurship is so great because you're learning so much about the various interactions of the institutions. Now, the second part is the human aspect. And I really was blindsided by this because I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. I was so focused on the science and the technology that when I was asked to speak at Relay for Life uh, in the chapter in uh, my area, I got up there I was talking just like with you guys, you know, cancer vaccines, nanotechnology, and I'm watching people start to cry. And I'm realizing that whether or not this is anything, whether this is a new treatment or therapy or if this will make a difference, that I am in an area where we're furthering research that could potentially one day help somebody. It'll help the woman in the audience who wants to be a mother to her children, or the father who wants to walk his daughter down the aisle. And I think that's where the passion comes in. I think that's what gets you up every day. That's what drives you to stay long hours in the lab. And that's what I think everyone needs to find, is their passion. It what makes them uh, move forward. And this is where we come in. Because when you believe in yourself and you believe that you can do something like this and you enable yourself to do so with the proper resources is when you are able to do anything. You can pursue something that helps people in Africa, bring water. Uh, you can you know, work on furthering a disease or especially there's one kid who's working on decreasing the cost of a mass spectrometer to help uh, find a new HIV antigen. So there's a lot you can do to impact society and also pursue your academic interests and see how you can kind of fit into the big picture of solving a global problem. So I kind of put together um, a list of things that I've, uh, of ideas I've collected from speaking with uh, scientists, engineering students, et cetera, about entrepreneurship and how they went about it, their stories, what they believe are the key aspects that help them. So here's the Everest, we'll kind of going back to the theme of the presentation. And I think the big picture, that new perspective, is what drives this whole process. Now it starts with the individual, who you are, what you believe in, your strengths and your weaknesses. Then it comes the idea, and I'll talk a little bit about how you can find that idea. The team, that's important. A lot of kids forget that. They think they can do this all on their own, and that's not true. And you have to realize you are in an incubator in universities, or whether you work at a university, because the amount of resources are inexhaustible. The network, how you as a team can build that network and start to bridge connections and carry your company and your idea to the next level. And finally, success, which is, honestly, it's about the journey. It's about getting up there. It's not about what happens in the end product. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It matters this whole journey of getting up there to actually having a product, getting in front of the VCs almost on your knees saying, I believe this idea is worth pursuing. I'm 110% behind this idea. And I believe that is the true um, the, true, the true meaning of entrepreneurship. For example, John Crowley, his children were diagnosed with Pompeii disease. He dropped everything, started a company, and cured his kids. This disease was incurable, it was nowhere near curing, and he did it through entrepreneurship. And that's why I believe people forget. It's not about, oh, we're just gonna start a company, make a lot of money. There's actually a real application here that's going on, and that's what I really feel like people are missing in entrepreneurship. And we honestly need to bring that back to, to reality, is this is what it's all about. 
It's about that human application. And for us, it's the only weapon we have is the fresh perspective that we can bring to all these different fields. So here are some steps you can take. Uh, I kind of threw these together. The one that I really think is key and people don't think about is the journal. Just keep a little notebook with you at all times. Write down anything funny, anything that makes you angry, any great idea. Because over time when you start reading through this, you'll start to see things piecing together. Um, also, be creative. That one part of your brain is never used. Every day, find other people who are interested in something creative and just talk. See how people sp uh, stir your emotions and get you excited about things, and that's really important. Um, also, when you're finding that idea, this is tough, and I think exploring other fields is really important. You know, take your science classes, get all those out of the way, but go take an art history course, go take an animation course, because that is key to bringing those fields and those perspectives to the sciences, because any great scientist is also a good artist, a good musician, and there's a reason for that. It's because when they go into those fields and they expand their minds and become creative, they apply that to the sciences, and that's when they find something really innovative. And just to end, I want to say that everyone's an entrepreneur. When you were born, you were constantly trying to change your own world, further your own mind, your ideas. And I believe we lose it over time because of our society. It's all about getting the job, learning the courses, getting the grades. And people need to unlearn. And they need to realize that that's not what it's all about. There's a bigger picture, and that's more important sometimes than getting those grades. You can do that too. I do not believe everyone needs to drop out of school and start a company. I believe it's more about balancing your life, learning how you can fit that into your schedule, and also um, make a difference. So I believe, I want to end with this, just saying it's your turn. That honestly, we all have our own passions, our own ideas. We just need to explore them. Do some introspection. Learn more about yourself and how you can further your own passions and emotions to turn them into an idea and a product. And I believe for me, it was the marine biology. And then I started realizing that I actually could help somebody and could make a difference. And I think that's the big picture. And that's what entrepreneurship is all about. So thank you for your time. I'm really happy to be here. So. Yeah.